Eventually, man will set out toward another planet, millions of miles distant. The instruments and techniques of modern science will guide his spacecraft with an accuracy and precision inconceivable to Earth-bound navigators. Though the spacecraft will be traveling at tens of thousands of miles per hour, it will seem to the men on board to be hanging motionless. For them, the stars will be fixed in their positions. There will be no day or night. The receding Earth will not remain behind them, but will be imperceptibly moving ahead. Where they left Earth, there is now only a point in space. If their objective is Mars, for example, they will not be moving directly toward it, but along a curving path, leading them to another point in space beyond the sun. They must arrive at that point at the same time as Mars. Neither they nor the planet can stop and wait. On this trip, an error in injection velocity at Earth of less than one-tenth of one percent, that's about 25 miles per hour, will, if it goes uncorrected, cause the craft to miss Mars by over a third of a million miles. The additional propellant and time required to correct so large an error near the end of the trip might be prohibitive. The mission would likely fail. But errors in space flight can be corrected during flight because the principles of space navigation are based on the knowledge that the forces involved are constant and predictable. In our solar system, each planet is locked into its orbit around the sun by its particular velocity, the planet's momentum being balanced by the sun's gravitational pull. The inner planets where the pull is greatest travel at greater speeds than the outer planets where the pull is weaker. If a spacecraft is to leave the Earth for another planet, it must increase or decrease the speed imparted to it by the orbiting Earth. Yet, either way, this velocity change is a fraction of the orbital speed of the Earth, 66,000 miles an hour. The velocity imparted by the Earth also puts the spacecraft into the ecliptic plane, that's the plane of the Earth's orbit. It would take the expenditure of considerable energy to get out of that plane. Fortunately, all planets move in planes very close to the ecliptic, and they all orbit in the same direction. Unlike the planets, a spacecraft can change its orbit and its direction because it can change its velocity. When a spacecraft escapes the Earth's gravity in the same direction as the Earth's travel around the sun, its greater momentum around the sun overbalances the sun's pull, throwing the spacecraft outward. But the sun's steady pull eventually slows the craft's outward flight. And here, unless it can boost its speed, it will start to fall inward. On the other hand, if the spacecraft leaves the Earth at the same speed as before, but in a direction opposite to the Earth's travel, it reduces its own velocity around the sun, permitting the sun to pull it gradually inward. But as it falls, it gains speed. This increasing momentum will throw it outward again unless it can reduce its speed. It is a controlled velocity change which alters the course of an orbiting body. In this voyage to Mars, the path the spacecraft should follow has been computed. But putting the craft on exactly the right path cannot be done. Even the most sophisticated launching rocket controls can't avoid small inaccuracies in launching or account for the uncertainties in the orbits of the Earth and planets. There will always be a small error to be corrected. The first correction will compensate for most of this error. A small velocity change made early in the voyage will have a much greater effect than the same change made later. 
Later corrections will remove residual errors and refine the trajectory of the craft.